2 has the Marvel chipset on it. The Marvel chipset is an 802.11n, but they have not announced an 802.11n product. Um, they basically took the backhaul antennas, the 5X antennas on there, and they FCC them, what I call, for a high gain or an 802.11n MCS 0 through 7. So they can do a 1 by 1 on the backhaul. They can do a 1 by 3 on the 2.4. That's one transmit and three receive. So performance-wise, um, they're not not significant as far as a N N client or a meshed 802.11n access point. Tropos is 7320. There again on the 2.4, they did a one by three, one transmit, three receives. You're not taking advantage of the full capacity of an end node if you don't do at least two or three transmit chains. So what, when people do a one by three, they're basically saying, I only care about legacy clients. I'm going to do one transmit, but I'm going to really take advantage of the MRC gain. That's okay short term. Long term on an end deployment, you don't want to do that. Uh, the 5.8 spec, one by one. Again, they don't have a strong mesh layer on the back. Fire tide, the 7020. That's an interesting fire tide. I run up against them a lot, but I like to compare them more against my point to point product. When fire tide goes out there and does video, they basically do a linear mode, so they don't truly mesh. If they lost a node, they wouldn't mesh. They lose their whole network. So as far as the, where they are on the map or where, um, where we compete, I compete more with my point to point product with fire tide, but although I do run against their end once in a while, Bell Air just announced a product in February of this year. They basically did a low-powered 100 end node, which is a 2 by 2 two transmit, two receives, and they have dual banded antennas in there. Uh, we don't recommend dual banded antennas, and that just has to do with once you start doing dual banded antennas, you're taking away a bunch of dB from each of the radios. So um, the pricing, you guys can look up the pricing. Uh, we compare with all these guys in pricing. And something to note when you start looking at data sheets and FCC reports, Cisco and Motorola report average power. That's what you really care about. Because that's what happens in the real world. Tropos, Fireton, and Bel Air report peak power. That's not real world conditions. Average power is real world conditions. So is there, um, I'd like to open it up uh, to questions. Um, and I think, Richard, you can field the questions if you'd like. Yeah, we have a, we have a, a few questions. And I'd like to thank you for a wonderful presentation on the 7181. For anyone who would like <coughs> to review this information again, excuse me, um, we will make this uh, webinar available on the YouTube, on the Streetwave YouTube channel. All you have to do is go to www.youtube slash Streetwave, and that'll bring up all of our past webinars and product overviews as well as this one. And you can see this in the Q&A contained in full. It should be up in a couple of days. If you have specific questions for us, either call into uh, Streetwave. We can certainly help you out with any of your needs with 7181. Um, at 888-604-5234 or call or come to the streakwave.com website or send me an email at richard at streakwave.com. So let's answer a few of the questions that have come up and thank you all for attending this uh, event. First question is, is if I'm using an external device like a notebook or a laptop computer, what's the distance that I can connect from or average distance that I can connect from the 7181? Okay, notebook or a laptop, it depends on the power of that device because it all comes down to what the power of the um, what the power of the client device is. Uh, I'm going to hear it better. I'll give you an example. How about a 15, if your um, output device is rated at about a 15 dB um, power on the chip, I'm going to say anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 feet on one of those clients. I'm going to see. It really depends on your client's uh, power. So if, I'm just giving you something off the top of my head because I look at a lot of field reports. If the client device is around 15, I see anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 feet um, to the AP. And the AP is sitting usually at 30 to 35 feet. Great. Um, so that gives you a general idea of where client devices would connect. Um, and then the obvious follow-on question to that is, is uh, how many SM units can you connect per antenna? Say it again, Richard? I, I'm just, how many units or how many devices can you connect to the antenna itself or to the device, to the 7181? 
Okay, so I think the question is how many associations can you have for that AP? Okay, that's an Ethereum chip limit. Yeah, that's an Ethereum chip limit. Um, most of them are 128, and we use uh, one for our something internal. So it's 127 associations. When we go to the 5.0 baseline, we'll up that in software to 256, which can be handled by the, you know, it's more of a chipset thing, but we're going to handle it in software. So um, our next question has to do with applications. And they were asking, how does this device work in an industrial area? For example, a steel mill where there's a lot of iron or metal, you know, or places where there's a lot of different differing conditions. Can you speak a little bit about how uh, this would work in industrial climates? Yeah, I'm out at two ports testing right now, and the coverage is phenomenal. Um, reflecting things, you know, like um, reflecting in metal is good for me. It depends where you're going to hang the device. I would recommend hanging the device at about 30 to 35 feet. That's our recommended practice. Although I've had people put them up as high as 80 feet, and you know it depends what kind of line of sight and what kind of other um, devices. What what kind of client are you going to talk to the AP with? Um, I'm at a bunch of different ports in the airport. Let me give you guys an example. We've done, you know, the airports have a bunch of planes flying in and out, which has a lot of metal around it. And I believe a lot of the concrete buildings around there are all built with metal. And we've performed outstanding in a bunch of different airport deployments we just did on the tarmac. So um, I would recommend, you know, the, I always say they recommend proofs in the pudding. Take, get a demo unit, you know, or fly off a demo unit or purchase a demo unit internally. Um, and take it out to your test site. Great. We have just a couple more minutes here, so let me get through these questions. Um, they ask whether or not the monitoring software uh, that Motorola uses can determine the location and connection speed of any given client. OK, so you're basically asking if we can look at client staff. Is that the question? Yeah, you can take a look at client staff. And then, uh, where would be the best places to deploy this? And you know, you mentioned some of the applications, but who who is actually deploying AP seventy one eighty one right now? Well, I have a bunch of different bars, and like I have a bunch of different government customers. It really depends. I, anywhere where you need broadband outdoor coverage or Wi Fi coverage, like. Um, like I gave you an example of the water and the ferries. They did it for safety reasons. Most people that in municipalities that I see doing it are doing it for safety reasons, either streaming the video back or opening up the AP for what I consider Wi-Fi hot, hotspot, where people eat, congregate, and shop, basically. Um, there's, and that comes back into the multi-use network. So, Broadband outdoors, anywhere where you need broadband outdoors. If you're trying to solve a specific problem, I see a bunch of people doing tracking with RFIDs and a tracking device. And I even have vehicle-mounted modems on, on what I call trucks and things outside so that they can actually track their assets. So it's pretty wide open. I've seen it in a bunch of different verticals. Great, and so the applications are wide and, and many different solutions. We like to encourage people to try out the AP7181 for their applications and their projects. If you have any questions, please feel free to give Streetwave a call, and we can certainly get you all of the information that you need on this product.